So you want to see in the photographer's bag. <laughs> so right here, I have my beautiful one rig here, my D1X with a 70 to 200 VR. Aeon Flux is probably you know, anywhere between 40 and my 50th film that I've done. You have to understand the specifics of what your work's going to be used for. In the newspaper days, I went out there and, to me, every front, every picture was a potential front page. Now, working in the film industry, every picture, every picture to me is a uh, potential poster. So the attitude hasn't changed all that much. It's still striving to want every image to have the possibility of being used for the ultimate outcome. My favourite lens of the lot, my 85-1.4. This is the sharpest, crispest piece of glass that Nikon have ever and will ever make. Photography has changed immensely in the last two years. There's absolutely no doubt about that. So I do everything that I need to do in my camera. I don't do anything at all in my computer. All I do is download, do a very, very quick edit, only for shots that are muzzy or, you know, bad expressions on faces. You know, I do an initial kill for the actor so that they don't have to sit there and stumble their way through hours of garbage. Probably the most common lens that I use, my 28 to 70. It's a beautiful zoom. This one's a bit noisy. Listen to this. Because it gets used all the time. It doesn't mean that it doesn't work. A major misconception is people sitting there thinking that the still photographer sits where the camera is and shoots exactly what they're shooting. For a start, my format is completely different. My framing, you know, posters and magazine covers are that way. They're not that way. So alternative angles really where the still photographer's at. It's hunting it down. And looking at the background and creating your own image that reflects the film. I've got my 14 2.8. Look at that glass there. Ooh, it's beautiful. Not only do you have to get the shot with it in a limited amount of time, but every picture is a potential poster. So you not only have to get it beautiful and pin sharp, etc., etc., you have to have the quality good enough to be used uh, in whatever size and format that uh, the studio wishes to use it. Whereas in the old news days, it was just get an image and it didn't matter whether it was out of focus, grainy, or whatever. Okay, so this is my blimp here. The reason why I still need this is because digital isn't silent. The only difference realistically is that where the film once was is now a digital chip. The digital chip goes exactly where the film plane used to be. See? Can't hear a thing. So it's still SLR, so you're still looking through, and the mirror's still got to come up, and the shutter's still got to come across. So that's why I still have to silence it. The lighting, Stuart, is just... I mean, it's really, really beautiful. I can always tell a good DP. When I'm struggling to find a shot, I'm there with a really good DP. And Stuart is one of those guys, I sit there and I'm like, damn, you got me on this one again, you know? So then I'll have to go and sit with the camera, and I hate doing that because I like to be independent and it's beautiful. So, I mean, the guy lights like Rembrandt, you know, it's great. It makes my day easier. I like to treat my equipment uh, the way I treat myself. If I can do it, my gear can. So if I can lie on the ground, my cameras can roll around. I love this job. I wouldn't do it for anything else. I'm not stopping this for anything. I'll keep shooting and I'll keep plugging away and you'll keep seeing my stuff. <laughs> so there you go. That's what's inside a photographer's kit.